Good afternoon. My name is David Kim. It's a pleasure to speak with you today. Today I'll be speaking about computer-aided diagnosis in medical imaging and specifically radiology. So what is radiology and who really cares? Radiology is a use of energy to probe the human body to create pictures to diagnose disease. Now, why is that important? So when you go see your doctor and you're sick, before the doctor can figure out what to do to treat you, the doctor has to figure out what's actually going wrong with you. And that process is called diagnosis. It turns out, uh, today, 50% of diagnoses are a result of radiology, of imaging. What that means is 100 years ago, prior to a lot of the technologies we have today, uh, without an MRI scanner or a CAT scan or an ultrasound, your doctor would have no idea what was going on with you half the time. And to figure it out, they'd have to actually cut you open and dissect you. So it's good that we now have radiology. So what we have here is an image of a, a functional MRI machine. This is actually mapping in your brain uh, oxygen usage uh, within your brain. So basically, it's looking at what you're thinking about. It's interesting, right now we can predict what you are going to think about about one second before you think it. So uh, we can anticipate that you're going to move your arm about a second before you move it because we can see your brain thinking about that process. So what is computer-aided diagnosis? Computer-aided diagnosis is actually the use of machine learning and other uh, computer algorithms to help doctors figure out what's going wrong, uh, particularly in some of these radiology images. And why has that been important? Well. This all started back in the day, uh, about 20 years ago, when people were concerned about being sued. Their goal was to try to reduce medical malpractice. Now, every time a doctor messes up, it often, uh, they're often sued for between $1 and $3 million. And so a lot of people were looking for ways to try to reduce their legal costs. So can we find a machine algorithm to help try to help us make the right diagnoses and help uh, physicians and healthcare workers uh, figure out what's going wrong? Moreover, these days, uh, it turns out that these costs are now ballooning. So medical imaging costs about $100 billion. And uh, it's also a result, it also has been the source of about 40% of hospital profits. So when the government sees that, they see a big target to try to reduce costs. And a lot of effort has gone into trying to improve productivity, uh, make physicians and healthcare workers more efficient uh, with less resources. So today, computer-aided diagnosis is helping physicians to uh, make diagnoses, but in particular, they're acting as second readers, which means that a physician will make their first attempt at diagnosing disease in a patient, and then the computer will come in and, as a backup and try to reconfirm that. So uh, this has been a challenge going forward in terms of regulation. Uh, a lot of the technology is being developed, and there's a delay of about five years between the time that some of this technology is developed and it can actually be rolled out. So here's our first example of a computer-aided diagnosis. This is mammography. This is, here we're looking for breast cancer in a patient. And if you uh, look at these breasts on the left and the right, uh, what you'll see are these little white triangles. And that's where the computer is guessing that there may be an abnormality. Uh, you'll, you'll see a yellow triangle on the left side of the screen that actually represents a cancer, and that was placed there by a human physician later on. Y you might notice there's a problem here, though. This particular patient has multiple white triangles all over their breasts, none of which actually represent cancer. What that represents is a false positive. That means the computer's identified an abnormality, uh, which ultimately ends up not being cancer. And it turns out uh, breast CAD is really bad. So uh, the performance of these algorithms is horrible. You might, you might see hundreds of patients before any one of these little white triangles, which the algorithm has identified, actually turns out to be cancer. What's really bad is because it's so bad, what physicians end up doing is they just ignore all the little white triangles. They ignore the algorithm because it's so bad. And then uh, the one out of 600 times it actually chooses something that's actually useful to look at, you, know, you ignore it, and then you miss the cancer. So breast CAD. Really bad. Lung CAD, this is less sad. Lung CAD is actually the use of this, these CAD algorithms to look for lung cancer, especially uh, if you're smoking a pack a day uh, for about 20 years, you should definitely be uh, getting a, a lung screening. And uh, what we're doing is looking for little nodules throughout the lung, uh, which might be cancer. 
Now, there are nodules which can be non-cancerous, uh, maybe abnormal but non-cancerous, and then there are some nodules which are cancer. And uh, this technology has been progressing and getting much better. This is a Siemens lung care system. Now, Watson CAD, that's potentially rad. IBM Watson has been working on a system which combines not only uh, algorithms analyzing the images, as you can see on uh, the right, but also the underlying text and medical records. So the electronic medical record includes all things from physician notes to other lab and blood tests. And when you start combining various different sets of data uh, into an algorithm, the uh, effective predictive power can be much more powerful. So this is really exciting. Um, hopefully, in the next three years, uh, this will be rolling out. So CAD applications are myriad, involving everything from breast cancer to chest diseases, GI diseases, whole body imaging, and some uh, neurology functions as well. For example, there are some systems that can make predictions as to whether you will, uh, your, your probability of getting Alzheimer's disease uh, several years in advance. So that's pretty cool. So let me walk you through a CAD algorithm. What are the standard imaging techniques that are used uh, to try to figure out if you have uh, cancer or not? And we'll be looking at a CT chest lung cancer screening algor algorithm as an exemplary model. So most of these CAD systems, these algorithms, have two main parts. The first part involves initial nodule identification. That means finding every abnormality in the lungs, for example, and uh, identifying them. And then secondly, removing the false positives, removing all the abnormalities which don't end up actually being cancer. Now, it turns out the second part is really the hard part in the image processing. Um, figuring out what's cancer and what's not is, is really hard. And uh, having a, lar a lot of false positives is what re resulted in, if you remember the breast CAD, all those extra white triangles, uh, which in the end really didn't mean anything, and just create a lot of noise. So these two components involve several sub-steps. In the initial lesion identification, uh, you go through some initial pre-processing steps. You segment the body portions. Um, you, you go through some candidate generation and feature extraction. And then in the false positive reduction component, uh, you start employing some machine learning classification efforts. So this is really where the machine learning comes in, uh, this classification effort now. Many of you have had the opportunity to implement some of these initial machine learning uh, algorithms, and so we'll get to that in a bit. So, for example, uh, in the first component, uh, we start with some just basic image pre-processing. Here you can see uh, a lung, which has uh, several vessels and other uh, vascular structures, and applying just some very basic filtering algorithms allow you to strip away a lot of those processes and just see these little dots, these little nodules here, some of which could be cancer and some of which could be normal. Subsequently, we, sub we segment the body region. Basically, we take the body and we try to divide it up into all the different sections, figure out what part is uh, a blood vessel, what, what part is a mass, what part is a uh, normal parenchyma. We then go through candidate generation. Uh, here, we are examining the shape of various three-dimensional structures by applying a normal vector, which is 90 degrees to the surface of the actual lesion. So as you can see, uh, Generally, cancers tend to be more round, kind of like a ball, and that has different features from something that's tubular, which might be something more like a blood vessel. We then employ feature extraction, which takes a, uh, assigns a representative vector and a numerical value of attributes. This is vector from uh, Despicable Me. Finally, we get to the uh, more interesting components, which are the false positive reduction aspects. Now, this is, uh, there's a lot of, lot of ways to go through this classification exercise. You know, we, you've all had a chance to implement some of these different uh, machine learning algorithms. You can do everything from using a rule-based classifier to uh, leveraging neural networks, semantic pattern recognition, linear discriminant analysis, and support vector machine. So, uh, in general, our CAD algorithms today, uh, they're kind of mediocre. Uh, they're not doing so well, but they are getting better. And so that's great. Uh, physicians and a lot of healthcare, a lot of others in healthcare, uh, are actually concerned that some of these algorithms can take over the place of uh, people, of physicians, and displace them. But I think actually that in the future we're actually moving towards a more uh, synergistic uh, 
um, sort of model where the humans work with the machines. Now, uh, classically, that's been conceived of as a sort of a, a cyborg type of thing where there's a, a combination of man and machine is better than just the man or the machine. These concepts have actually evolved into the idea of the centaur. Uh, a centaur is, instead of a man and machine, is really man and AI. This, this combines the uh, creativity and intuition of man with the horsepower of AI. And there's been, there's been a lot of examples to show that this is actually very effective. You've seen uh, this being leveraged at uh, Palantir, for example, where um, human analysts are, are leveraging AI tools to improve their efficacy. And also um, in freeform chess. And actually, in freeform chess, this is where a human being is paired with a machine to play chess against uh, other people. It turns out you can take uh, two average human beings, uh, two average chess players, combine them with a decent computer, and uh, an average human being and a decent computer can outperform a grandmaster and can perform the best um, chess playing uh, algorithms out there. So that's pretty something that's pretty exciting. You just take a plain old human being, just like you and me, combine it with a like, decent computer, and you can outperform the best in the world. And uh, that's that concept of a centaur and something that uh, uh, I'm looking forward to. So thank you so much.